What's up guys, welcome to another video. I'm gonna touch base with you guys and show you some stuff I found at the flea market. Got some got some fire ass games, y'all. We're gonna do that after this uh, game here. This is Hybroxia. This is a game that I didn't really follow the release of. You think I would because it's a shooter. It's actually a pretty cool shooter. But uh, I had to get this from a reseller, but it was $40 brand new. So, you know, it's Play Asia, and you know, their collector's editions, are they're just right. It's a game. It's a soundtrack. The soundtrack is important because a lot of times I rip it. I use it for my YouTube videos and maybe like a card. I think they give you a number card, um, you know, like one through whatever, 2,000 or whatever they do. But uh, yeah, it looks like this reseller packaged this pretty well. And I like when I order video games. Sometimes I'll get newspaper like this from other countries. Um, I might start saving that or using it to package other stuff in when people buy from me. But um, okay, it looks like the sticker, the Play Asia sticker is actually in here. That's a plus. One thing about the Play Asia Collector's Editions, they always have a reusable sealed uh, cellophane case uh, that the game comes in. Uh, that's pretty handy because that way you don't have to find that specific size cellophane case for your game. So that's one thing that I really appreciate that Play Asia does when they release a lot of these collector's editions. Um, you know, they don't do this for the standard editions, but anyway, it tells you what's in the box right there. Art card, soundtrack, game, and I think a uh, manual. I think this thing comes with like a pretty hefty manual from what I've seen, but there's the Play Asia sticker right there. Hybroxy, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. This is a cool retro inspired game. Now, I'm, I've not been a huge fan of, of a lot of those retro styled uh, shooters that have come out recently because a lot of them haven't been that good, but I'm gonna give this thing a chance. This packaging looks pretty cool. Packaging looks pretty cool. I think a company, I could be wrong about this, Lily Mo Games or something published this. I know this is a Play Asia exclusive. This thing came out on the PS4, Vita, Switch, and I do believe this would, I would assume this would be on Steam. Um, but this is the only physical version that I know of of this game. So, you know, Play Asia. They, I haven't been ordering from Play Asia a lot. You know, I, I placed an order the other day, and, you know, as Parade's coming out, I got to grab them before they go. If I, if I lose out on them, I'm going to have to get a reseller, and I don't want to, I don't want to have to do that on those games. Those things might get crazy, but. Yeah, there's the game, and it's got like a shiny finish on the front of the game, and the uh, the, the ship is kind of like uh, it's, it's popping out of the cover, so it's pretty good. Now, opening these boxes without bending them is tricky. At least it is for me. The best method that I've found is I take my switchblade, shove it in the side, and kind of pry it back and forth on each side till I wiggle it loose. That's the best method. I'm not doing that right now. I don't know why I'm not doing that right now, but I've bent so many boxes where as soon as I bent it, I'm like, oh, fuck, you know? And it's not that big of a deal now, but a few years ago, if I did that, I would have felt like it was the end of the world. I, like I would have to buy a whole new game because I bent that box. But uh, just being honest, I'm not, my mind's not there anymore. But here we go. This is the basic collector's edition stuff that Play Agent gives you. And it's just what I want. So the soundtrack, awesome. If this soundtrack is great, I'm going to rip it, use it for my YouTube videos. Um, plus, it's a physical item, a tangible item that I can hold in my hand. I, you know, as an almost 40-year-old man, I appreciate stuff like that. And there's the art card, which is pretty much the cover of the game. It's just numbered, and it looks like I got 1148 out of 1500. And there's only 1500 of these made. So as of right now, I don't know of any version of this game that came out on the PS4, the Switch, or the PC. The only physical version that I know of, and if I'm wrong, you know, correct me in the comments down below, is this, uh, this Vita version. And it feels pretty hefty. Um, God, guys, I'm so behind on buying video games. There's there's about 10 other games that I need to get to get caught up like on these shooters and stuff. There are just so many of them coming out. Not all of them are good, but I would consider myself a genre completionist to a certain extent. Um, you know, if something's super crazy rare, I'm, I'll obviously burn a copy myself or get a repro or something. But, um, you know, because it's all about playing the games for me, those shooters. But there's the manual. God damn, it's nice to see a manual in here. That's that's what's up. It is nice to see a manual. And for a shooter, a manual this thick, you don't really see that that often. I think the last big manual I saw for a shooter was in a Caladrius Blaze on the PS4. But note section, that's always uh, awesome to see that. As a child, we always had note sections in our, uh, you know, like Super Nintendo Sega Genesis manual. So there's the cart right there. And let's see, do we have reversible cover art? No, but there's a picture on the other side. Interesting. Interesting because the case is uh, blue and you can't see through it. 
So that's pretty cool. You know, I wouldn't have known that was there unless I pulled it out, right? I mean, I guess you could consider that reversible cover art. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Is that reversible cover art? But yeah, that's a uh, Hybroxia for the Vita. You know, glad I picked this up. It was 40 bucks. And, uh, you know, when I got it, there wasn't that many out there. So if you want this game, I try to look for it soon. But uh, anyway, here's a first impressions on Hybroxia. Um, you know, this is like two weeks of me playing the game. So, uh, it, you know, just keep in mind all my opinions are, you know, about two weeks worth of me playing Hybroxia. Let's start with some of the things I like. I do like the character sprites, the style of them, that 8, 16-bit style. I do like that. I like the sound effects. They really work for Hybroxia. The way things explode, it sounds pretty cool. I like the leveling, I'm not going to say leveling system. I do like the types of weapons that you can get in Hybroxia. They work. Uh, a game like this takes a retro style game and brings it, um, gives it kind of modern controls, if you will. Now, there are some things that I kind of don't really care for in Hybroxia. The leveling system, although the leveling system doesn't force you to play levels multiple, multiple, multiple times to level up and buy new items, you do have to do a little bit of that. And to me, those are cell phone game mechanics. And that came very apparent to me when I played Skyforce Reloaded. Now, Skyforce Reloaded was a cell phone game that was subsequently released for like PS4 or Switch, I do believe. If I'm wrong about that, please collect, collect, correct, correct me in the comments down below. Testify if I'm wrong about that one, but that's what it feels like to me. That's what I saw it for first, and then I saw it ported to other systems. You know, I saw that in games like Super Hydra, Hydora, whatever, you know what I'm talking about, that shooter. I saw it in games like that. I saw it in games like Jamestown. And although Jamestown is an excellent game, I do believe that Jamestown would be a lot better if it was straight arcade style shooter, none of that leveling stuff. You know, no, these games are not Lords of Thunder. Lords of Thunder was the first shooter that I saw uh, that used a leveling system uh, similar to what we see in modern cell phone game shooter mechanics. But anyway, I don't really like the backgrounds in this game uh, the backgrounds don't really stand out the enemy sprites don't really stand out uh, the bosses don't really stand out uh, you know it just feels like it's the same from level to level so yeah this game uses uh, loses a few points due to that um, yeah the soundtrack's not that good it just kind of blends together I get it it's that 8 16 bit ish style of music but it, it, let's just face it, it's not Soldier Blade or anything like that. It just, it's kind of bland. But overall, for $40, you know, Hybroxia, I feel like it's a decent deal. The collector's edition with the soundtrack, I feel like that's worth $40. And I did have fun playing uh, Hybroxia. Don't get me wrong, I do like it. There's just certain things to it that kind of get to me a little bit. Uh, the leveling system probably being uh, the main thing. I mean, look at games like Skyforce. You see the same levels over and over and over again. Same enemies over and over and over again. And the only thing that you're trying to work towards is leveling all your weapons up as high as you can get. Same thing like in a platformer. or Actually, you know, I can't really think of too many platformers to do that. But you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I feel like for the price, if you can find it for 40 bucks or maybe a little bit cheaper if you just find the game, not the collector's edition, I feel like it's a decent deal, especially if you're a fan of the genre like myself. It, it's just not it's just not a, a crazy awesome shooter. It's it's decent. Um, and, you know, again, worth $40. But anyway, let's check out what I got at the flea market. My flea market game shop finds this week are awesome. First game, Shikigami no Shiro 2, or I do believe Castle of Shikigami 2. This came out on the PlayStation 2 here in the U.S. I guess it's the same game. Let me know in the comments down below. I got this from a place called Gamer's Paradise. It is one of the best retro game stores in my area. There's a few good ones. I'm very fortunate to have some great game stores around here. But I got this one at Gamer's Paradise. Uh, the owner, David, definitely hooked me up with this game. So I'm very grateful for that. But uh, game's in great shape. Now, this CD, uh, Genesis, not Genesis, Sega CD, uh, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast games. I know those are very delicate. So you want to kind of find them in as good a condition as possible. Uh, there's the CD soundtrack. That's awesome. And some art cards, which, let's just face it, I'm never going to open. But it looks like artwork on one side and a calendar on the other. Really cool. You know, I don't know if this is complete. You know, let me know in the comments down below. Am I missing like a spine card or anything for this game? Um, you know, I don't, I have no idea. Next game. 
Ghost Pilots for the Neo Geo CD. Now, I bought this at a pretty awesome retro store in my area, Regen. Um, it's a great area. It's a very transient area, White Marsh, Maryland. So a lot of imports kind of come in there. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of great stuff out of there over the years. Um, they had this for the Neo Geo AES, I want to say maybe a year ago. And I had an AES at the time. I just didn't want to spend the money. Although they had it for a pretty good price. It was only a couple hundred bucks. Uh, this actually cost me 75 Yeah, oh God, I know, $75. I don't mind clipping that out for something like this, though, because I'm going to play it. And this is an actual Neo Geo CD case, not a repro case. So awesome that I found it in that condition with an original case. Uh, this came from Gamer's Paradise, um, this Wii game here. Um, yeah, it does not come with its manual, but Valhalla Knights? I don't know. Somebody told me this game was decent, and that's why I bought it. It came out... I don't know when it came out, but anyway, it was under 10 bucks. And Rodia Sky Soldier, I have this for the Wii U. And I do believe the Wii version came with that Wii U, but that Wii U version, this was under $10 too. So I, I guess I just picked it up because, you know, sometimes I can't resist when these Wii games are under $10. Guys, I know this video is a little bit scattered, but I just wanted to cram everything video game related for this week into this video to touch base with you guys. I want to hear how you guys are doing too. Let me know in the comments down below, and I'm going to let you know how I'm doing. First things first, work is whipping my ass right now. I work six days a week, 14 hours a day, so I don't really have a ton of time for video games. I'm very fortunate for the time that I do have because I got a family too. I got to spend time with them too. And working 14 hours a day, six days a week, it's really hard to do that. But, you know, that's where I'm at. The money's kind of flowing in right now, so definitely can't complain there. Now, YouTube. Let's talk about YouTube for a minute. We're finally starting to see in this tail end of 2019 a lot of changes as far as these bigger channels are concerned. We're seeing people that are stopping uploading content. You know, I'll give you an example. You know, John Hancock, another example, Smash JT. But I do believe with the Smash JT thing, I think that he's starting to get for real now. And these little videos he's doing on his car rides, I'm kind of digging it because he's really getting deep. And I feel like now he's going to be able to say things that before he, he probably would have been scared that he would probably lose or not gain some of those relationships from some of those bigger YouTubers. But now that he doesn't have to worry about that and he has a job to hold him down, I feel like that Smash JT dude can really get for real and we'll probably start seeing some real gems drop out of him. So that's just what I said. You know, that's what I see for what it's worth. But, you know, people like the Metal Jesus, we're finally starting to see him kind of acknowledge what the whole e-bagging community has been saying now for a while. Uh, in his videos, when he uses phrases like buying things with his own money, like, why would you even say something like that in the video? You're, God, he's, what, 10 years older than me? <laughs> why? It's like something a child would say, like, Mom, I bought this with my own money, you know? Like, why would you even say that in the video? And it's not even your money. It's like Patreon money. <sighs> you know? I'm really glad that people are finally starting to see, uh, you know, what they call the great Patreon live where people donate money to a channel thinking it's going to improve video. It's going to improve audio and it's not, you're just enabling people to live a life that's not conducive to themselves or for anybody else for that matter. And we're finally starting to see that we're finally to start to see this change. And you know, this whole anti e-bagging community is not a community of like angry, hateful trolls. It is not like that at all, guys. These are people, at least this community, that are passionate about video games, that care deeply for a lot of video games, and want to share their love and their knowledge with the world. And that, to me, that's all the same reasons why I came to YouTube. Those are the things that I sought out. And that whole community is pushing a lot of these smaller channels because it's the stuff that is interesting to watch, guys. You know, now when I watch these bigger YouTube channels, you know, I don't know if the video games they're showing are ones that they're really passionate about or are they video games that they're just getting paid to show off. Anyways, guys, you know, what did you pick up this week? Let me know in the comments down below. Until next time, guys, peace out.